let's do a quick review on the concept. What is the correct procedure to use when the population standard deviation is unknown? So number one, when sigma is unknown, you use a T procedure. All right. Number two, what is the correct procedure to use when sigma is given? So when sigma is given, you use the Z procedure and then write the standardization formula for Z and T. OK, so number three, when Z, uh, when sigma is given, you use a Z. So that is X bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of N. And then the T is still X bar minus mu, but you divide it by S over square root of N. And then this is a sample standard deviation. Number four, how are the degrees of freedom and the T-curve of the T-distribution related? The T-curve, the shape or the distribution of the T-curve is determined by the degree of freedom. If the degree of freedom is large enough, the shape of the T-curve is very similar to the Z-curve. Number five, when the sample size is large, the sample size is at least 30, for example, how's the graph of the T related to the graph of Z? So number five, when N is close to at least 30, so greater than or equal to 30, so the T-curve is very similar to the Z-curve. Number six, TCDF, normal CDF. Okay, what is the CDF mean? So number six, CDF stands for cumulative density function. What is cumulative density function means? Cumulative density function means I want to find the area under the curve from one cut to another cut. And then the TCDF command, so TCDF, you go from lower limit, I use L, so let's just write out lower, upper limit. We don't need to worry about the mean and the standard deviation because the degree of freedom determines the shape. So the degree of freedom is equal to N minus one. Compared to normal CDF, we do need to know the mean and standard deviation. So we have lower limit, upper limit, and then you have to tell me the mean and the standard deviation because in a Z curve, the normal distribution, uh, the mu determines the center, the standard deviation determines the shape, the spread, the distribution. Number seven, write the calculator command. Before we get into that, what is the result represent? These two result, this one and that one right here, they represent probability. write the calculator of command of the inverse t distribution so number seven that is a uh, inverse t and then you put an area and then a degree of freedom the result is a t value corresponds to the area right here so you have a t curve you cut a piece of area right here you have to tell me what the t corresponding t value is so that's the concept check problem. Let's move on to an application problem so I can bring everything together. So we have an application problem. A job review website reports that the average income of quality assurance engineer with 10 to 20 years of experience is $85,000. The population standard deviation is unknown. So this is something that we have to underline. The income follows normal distribution. Answer the following questions. All right. So let's uh, write down what is given. So they said that the mean is equals to $85,000. And then sigma is unknown. When sigma is unknown, the whole problem is a T procedure. So A is we have the sample size equals to 17 and the sample standard deviation is 8,000. Calculate the probability that the income is at least 86,000. So probability 
that the income, the average income, which is X bar, at least greater than or equal to $86,000. So first, you standardize the $86,000. So since we use sample standard deviation, then this is a T, right? So greater than or equal to $86,000 minus the mu divided by still remember what the formula is so that is t equals to x bar minus mu over s divided by square root of n so divided by 8000 over the square root of 17 we are going to do this in uh, our calculator we do this in one step so we open the parentheses 86000 minus 85000 close parentheses divided by 8000 over the square root of 17. So that is 0 0.515. I like to keep uh, three decimal places for the t. And then you draw a graph for me. So the graph is 0 in the middle, 0 0.515, that is a positive and then you have a greater than or equal to so that is the area that we are looking for so you go ahead and then you hit um, TCDF so you go to second and then you go to bars so second bars and then you pick normal CDF and uh, normal CDF you pick TCDF TCDF and then you have a uh, let's write 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 down. I like to do the writing first, and then we do the typing. So that is TCDF from zero point five one five to positive infinity. The degree of freedom is n minus one seventeen minus one. So zero point five one five comma positive infinity. You type one second comma ninety nine and then 17 minus 1, or you type 16. So that is equal to 0 0.3068. So that is the answer to number 1. Number 2, I gave you a sample size, and then I gave you a sample variance. So you have to take the square Take, take the square root of that and then I want to find at most 84,200 bucks. So in part B, I gave you that n is equal to 17 and then s square is equal to the square root of 625 and then 40 and then at most 84, right? So probability x bar is at most less than or equal to 84,200. Okay, let's standardize. So we have probability t less than or equal to, we take x minus mu, right? So 84, 200, and then minus 85, divided by s, which we have to take the square root because that equals to s, right? I will just take, take the square root. I will let the calculator do, do that for me. Divided by the square root of n, which is 17, right? No, it's a 20. So that is a 20, then this is a 20. And then we have to find out what that equals to. So t less than or equal to. Okay. 84200 minus 85,000. Close parenthesis divided by open parenthesis. A square root divided by another square root. So you can do square root of 625,000 and then click the right arrow to exit the square root divided by the square root of 20. So again, click the right arrow to get out of the square root and then you enter. So that is negative 4.525. So the area must be pretty small because negative 4.5 is almost all the way on the right on the left side so we have a zero negative 4.25525 and then this is the area so we have a tcdf from negative infinity to negative 4.2 get 
is wrong again. Phi two phi, and then my degree of freedom is uh, 20 minus 1. So you go to second verse, TCDF, okay, and then negative infinity, so negative 1, not minus 1, negative, the key between the comma and enter. Negative 1, second comma, 9, 9, and then negative 4.525, right? 5, yep, 5, 2, 5, I don't want to get this wrong. And then 20 minus 1, or you type 19. So that is equal to 0 0.0001, if you keep uh, four decimal places. So that is for part B. Okay, let's double check the number. Okay, everything looks good. Divided by square root of 20. Okay, the sample variance is correct. 625. Oh, ha. Huh. One problem in here. The 625 looks like I forgot a zero. There are four zero. So this must be four zero. I will just fix, fix that right here. So this must be four zero. And then this must be uh, something else. I'm going to re re redo it. Okay, second enter. Oh, I, I just retype this. 842 minus 85,000 divided by the square root of 6250 followed by 30. So this time I got a 40. And then divided by the square root of 20. Okay, uh, negative 1.431. So this is negative 1.431. This time I, I got this right, right? Okay, 1.431, so it's right here. 1.431, let's erase that. And then this is my area. And then I'll do the second verse, TCDF, negative infinity to negative 1.431, and then a 19. So that is 0 0.0843. All right, so that is part B. Let's do part C. So part C. We have, uh, if the sample size is 10, I'm going to read the problem for you. So the sample size is equal to 10. The sample standard deviation, S, is equal to 7,500. I want to calculate the probability that the average income is between these two numbers. The equal or not equal is not important, right? Because, uh, we are doing continuous random variable. So first, we standardize both, and we need more space, so we are going to move this away. You take the given number, subtract the mean, 85,000, divided by, and then the sample standard deviation, 7,500, over the square root of 10. And then this one is a T because we start the standardization process. So A6250 minus 85,000 divided by 7,500 over the square root of 10. Okay, let's do this uh, in calculator. Parenthesis, 84550 minus 85,000. And then divided by a6250. Actually, that is not right. I'll just rewrite 7500 over the square root of 10. Okay, double check. Okay. Negative 0 0.1819. And then I do second 
enter so I got the same command out all I have have to do is I change the first number to a6250 so that is 0 0.527 so this one uh, I have a um, TCDF from negative 0 0.190 to 0 0.527 and then the degree of freedom is 10 minus 1. So that gives me a probability. The graph, you have this. And then the mean is equal to 0. We have negative 1, 0 0.190. And then positive 0 0.527. And then the area is between them. Let's take a look. Second wash. TCDF, negative 0 0.190 and then 0 0.527 and then the degree of freedom is 10 minus 1 okay 0 0.2678 so that is the area in the next three sub problems we are going to do inverse t distribution so let's uh, take let's take a look at the uh, problem so assume the population mean is 85,000 so let's switch colors for this so this is equals to 85,000 and then the sample standard deviation is 6,000 so of course we are working on a T procedure and then the sample size is equals to 25 what is the maximum income of the 30.8 percentile so I didn't use the word top 10% 30.8 percentile so that must be the 30.8 percent on the left right so we draw a graph and then we cut 30.8 percent on the left so this is 0 0.308 and then this is my corresponding t now you have to tell me the standardized value so the standardized value is inverse t and then you do 0 0.308 and then you do the sample size minus 1 that is the degree of freedom I type the inverse t in here for you because not everyone has a, some people might be using a TR-83 so I don't want to stop you from doing this problem I type, I type it out so everybody can practice all right second bars inverse t just write under inverse norm and then you have 0 0.308 and then 25 minus 1 then you get the standardized income negative 0 0.508 I'm not saying that is your income that is your standardized income how do you find the average income to find the average income remember this t is equals to x bar minus mu over s divided by square root of n you have t right but you don't have x bar so you minus mu divided by 6,000 over the square root of n which is a 25 so you have that equals to 0 0.508 and then we have to solve for x bar in case you don't remember how to solve this type of equation let me give you a simple one really quick so let's say I have a x minus 1 divided by 2 equals to 3 so first you multiply both side by 2 right so 3 times 2 is equals to 6 and then you add 1 to both sides so x is equals to 7 so that's how you solve it so back to the more complicated problem so you have this x bar minus 85,000 equals to negative 0 0.508 times the denominator which is a fraction don't calculate this yet we are going to do everything in one step so we don't need to keep round keep rounding numbers so x bar is equals to negative 0 0.508 times 6000 divided by square root of 25 and then you add the mean to it or you can just write this out and then do it in one step it is okay to skip one step right here so what is that equal to you? negative 0 0.508 times 6000 divided by root 25 which is a 5 right I type the square root anyway 25 and then type the right arrow 
to exit the square root because you don't want to keep typing number in the square root and then you add 85,000 to it. Remember, be careful. You are typing many, many numbers. Don't make a mistake. You did all the work to get to the last step. You don't want to make a mistake in the last step. And then that is equal to 84390.4. This is the income. So if your income is this amount or below, then you are the bottom 30.8%. All right. So how much do you need to be the top 10%? And also, again, I gave you the inverse T so everybody can practice, even though you don't have a TI-84. So in part E, top 10, this is how we do top 10, zero. So this is a 10%, we have a T. So T is equals to inverse T, and then 10%, what's the sample size, 25 minus one so that is second wash inverse t 10 and then comma 24 negative 0 0.1 not 0 point negative 1.318 is this uh, the T that I want? Uh, nope, this is a negative, right? This is a T on the left side. The graph is symmetric. So we have uh, the right side is 1.318. So that is the right side. And this is the one that we are looking for. So now we have to undo the standardization. So we start with X bar minus the mean divided by S, which is um, 6,000 divided by the square root of n, 25, equals to the standardized value. And then you multiply the denominator, add the mean to it, so you have x bar equals to 1.318, and then you multiply 6,000 divided by square root of 25, and then you add the 85,000 to it. So that is x bar equals to do the math, 1.318 times 6,000 divided by, you can be lazy, just divide it by five or you type divided by square root of 25, if you can. But uh, this is not always a perfect square. If I give you a 26, then it is not five then. And you don't know what the square root of 26 is. Okay, hit the right arrow, exit the square root, and then you add 85,000 to it. All right, that is equal to eighty six five eight one point six dollars. If your income is this much or above, then you are the top ten percent. And then we have the middle sixty five percent. That is the last part. So middle sixty five. We draw a graph first, and then we cut sixty five percent in the middle. So that creates a T one and a T two. So first we need the piece on the other side, this and that. So we take the 100 minus 65 divided by 2. Then you can find out how much you have on each side. So you take the 100 minus 65 divided by 2. What do you get? You have a 17.5, right? So this is 0 0.175. This is 0 0.175. And then you find the T1. So T1 is a inverse T, 0 0.175. And then the degree of freedom is 25 minus 1. So T1, what is that equal to? Second wars, and then inverse T, 0 0.175, and then 25 minus 1. So you have negative 0 0.953 and then t2 is positive 0 0.953 right one negative one positive i gave you that in my problem also so now you have to undo the standardization one for negative one for positive so let's go back to queen we have x bar minus 85,000 divided by 6,000 over square root of 25 equals to negative 0 
we also need to do one for positive. So this x bar is equal to negative 0 0.953 times the denominator. And then you add the 85,000 to it. So what is x bar equal to? Negative 0 0.953 and then you multiply 6,000 divided by the square root of 25. Right arrow, exit the parenthesis, you add 85,000 to it. So that is 83856.4. That is for the T1. For the T2, the, what is the difference? The difference is here, the minus, right? So that's the only difference. So for T2, just watch my calculator. I am going to type second enter. You see this pops out, right? And then you move the cursor to the minus. And then all you have to do is you hit the DEL. Just write the one Y next to mode, DEL, to delete the negative. And then you hit enter. Well, the answer is there. So you don't have to type the whole thing again. All right, so if your income is between these two numbers, then you are the middle 65%. So that will be all in this problem. I will see you all in the next lesson.